Good morning. Uh, we are continuing with the general preoperative care of a patient who is supposed to go for surgery in lesson four, part two, of Mrs. Daka. So let's continue where we left from the previous day and uh, see how we can prepare our patient to go for surgery using the other way of organizing our nursing care. As I said, the previous in the previous lesson, we said we can divide the the preoperative care in remote, or the word usual or elective preoperative care are used, immediate preoperative care and emergency preoperative care. All these I explained them, and I'll keep explaining them as we move on. So in the first uh, lesson for part one, we talked about preparing a patient, organizing our nursing care, and tabulating our nursing care using the psychological uh, preparation and the phys physical preparation as one method. Today we are now looking at the other a way of organizing your nursing care using the abbreviations which we call apophrenema in order for you to help you remember what you are expected to do. This is very helpful during exams and it is very helpful to help you organize yourself in case you don't understand very well how to go about as a beginner in the nursing career this is very helpful take note and see how you can apply it and see how much it will help you so this is the the same word and this is what the word apophrenema that stand for the aims environment position observation psychological care hygiene, rest, exercise, nutrition, elimination, medication, and advice. All these things are, have been talked about in the other way of organizing your nursing care. But this one is helping you to see what you have done and what you have not done looking at these subtitles. So if you are doing your elective pre-operative care, you should be able to follow these acronyms very well. And as we start, we we'll start with the word A, standing for M's. You should be able to write your pre-operative care where you begin to understand what is expected of you. Why do you want to nurse this patient? This is what we mean by M's. So, for example, I've written these M's for you. I want to nurse this person or this patient preoperatively because I want to retain the physiological function back to normal. Or I want to promote wound healing. Or I want to prevent complications. So these are the reasons why I want to nurse my patient. So before you can nurse your patient, always write your M's. We move on. The other thing that you need to know about is the environment. Where is this patient going to be as you want to nurse this patient? This patient should be in should be admitted in a surgical ward, preferably 48 hours before the actual operation takes place. And this environment where I'm going to put my patient in this surgical ward, the ward should be clean, it should be damp dusted, and it should be free from inf infection. 
the word should be well lit it should have enough light it should have good ventilation there should be enough air in that ward but it should be free from drought it should be free from wind passing through the ward so make sure as you prepare your environment the ward is ready to receive your patient the next word in that abbreviation is the position. When you put your patient in bed, what position is your patient going to take? Sometimes the doctor will prescribe which position the patient will be in, but as a nurse, looking at the condition of the patient, you should be able to put the patient in a position that would be suitable for their condition. We have learned about positions in bed. For example, the semi fowler's position, the recumbent position, the semi prone position. There are so many of them. You should be able to understand which, which position your patient is going to lie in as they are sleeping in bed. The next word is O, which will stand for observations. You, as a nurse, you are expected to perform the vital signs, which is temperature, pulse, respiration, and blood pressure. These preoperatively will act as baseline data as the patient comes back from an operation. So check your, your temperature and give a reason why you are checking your temperature. Check your pulse, check your, your blood pressure. Give reasons why are you, you doing these observations. Other than the vital signs, you need also to observe your patient for any pain, for pallor, for cyanosis, for any skin condition and the general condition of the patient. And all these things should be recorded and if there is anything significant, you are supposed to report them to your superior. The other thing that you need to do in your observation is uh, the laboratory tests. This patient should be examined, should be tested for, for example, for urinalysis, for HB, for bleeding time and clotting time, for ECG, for X-ray, for blood sugar, or whatever the condition is, you should be able to do this laboratory test and make sure the patient is ready for the operation. The other word is psychological care. Here is this is the same psychological care like we explained in the in in part one of our general preoperative care. You need to explain to the patient because they are full of anxiety, they are full of fear, they have a lot of concerns. So explain what is going on. Because this is elective surgery, the patient needs to be explained even about the hospital routine the nursing procedures that you want to be that you want you are doing on a patient so that the patient can be familiar with what is going on you should also introduce your patient to other patients in the ward you should also allow your patient to ask questions ask the, the verbalize their concerns, answer their questions, allay their anxiety. If you are not able to answer all the questions, refer the patient to the in charge so that the patient's questions and concerns can be addressed. If there is a, a spiritual 
the care that the patient is looking for, is looking for the pastor, is looking for the priest, or is looking for the chaplain, or any religious leader that the patient mm -hmm. wants to see. Give them an opportunity to see their religious leader and respect their beliefs. Allow these people to come in and see the patient and speak to the patient. Then the other thing that you need to do also is you need to involve the patient and all the relatives that are significant to the patient. For example, if the patient is a male and wants the wife to be on the bedside or wants the mother to be on the bedside, these, uh, these people are called significant others. Therefore, you need to allow this person to be next to the patient and be able to answer their anxieties, their concerns, their questions. You, it is your responsibility as a nurse so that you give psychological care to this patient. The other thing that we talk about in the psychological care, just like in part one, the signing of the consent form, you should be able to explain, give information to the patient, give information to the significant others for the patient, and be able to allow the patient to sign the consent form if they are able. If they are below 18 or unconscious, make sure there is a next of kin that can sign the consent form for them. And as you continue, make sure that the patient understands what is going on before they can sign the consent form. Let's move on. The other part is the hygiene. Just like we talked about bathing this patient or giving a shower to this patient, it is necessary you need to do that. You need to remove the nail polish for the patient. You need to remove the makeup for the patient as you prepare this patient because you will want to observe you remember cyanosis and anemia, we check them from the nail beds or from the lips and from the tongue. So you need to find that these areas are free from any polish so that they will be, you are able to observe without any problem. You need to give your oral care to this patient. You need to care also for the skin of the patient that is, you shave the patient. You need to shave. No patient goes to theater without being shaved unless it is indicated that you should not shave the patient. Otherwise, it is a must that this patient should be shaved and it is your duty as a nurse to ensure that this patient is shaved. And as you shave this patient, the patient should have no cuts, should have no cracks. Let's move on. The other thing that you need to do is to provide rest for this patient. As the patient is waiting to go to theater, as they are having this anxiety and the, the fears, the concerns, you need to provide a quiet environment so that you promote rest to the patient. Other than uh, having a quiet environment, meaning the environment where the patient is sleeping should be quiet. There should be no shouting. Remember, in our career, you are not allowed to be shouting on top of your, your voice. You cannot shout, you cannot allow noise because this is why we want the patient to rest. So you need to put on your rubber shoes so that your shoes are not making noise as you are walking. You should make sure that if you have radios or televisions, they are all at the lowest volume so that they don't make noise or disturb the patient who is desiring to sleep. You should also oil or grease your, your trolleys that are making noise as they move around, making make, make sure that your trolleys 
are not making any noise so that the patient rest is promoted your phone and i repeat your phone should be on silent you also need to restrict visitors to the patient so that you give ample time for the patient to rest for you to do this also you need to make sure that all your nursing procedures are, are clustered meaning they are put together for example when you want to do bed making and you want to do a bed bath and you want to do tpr around this patient when you go for your bed making make sure you also go for your bed bath make sure you also do your tpr so that when you finish everything you allow time for the patient to rest the patient is not disturbed this person comes in i want to bed make immediately they finish another person comes in i want to do bed bath immediately they finish another person will come i want to do the vital signs no all these things should be done in one block or in one cluster so that you create time for the patient to rest as you desire this patient to rest make sure that they are warm enough the patient should not be feeling cold because they may they may fail to rest if you are feeling cold it is not possible to to rest so make sure the the, the room where they are is warm enough so that they can rest and if it is a hot season the, the room should be cool enough it shouldn't be too hot for the patient to fail to rest let's move on The other word that we use is the word elimination. It's the same way as, as we said in part uh, one, where we talked about the bowel movements. If the patient is able to, to open bowels without any difficulty, please allow the patient to open bowels before the operation. And if they are not able, you need to give an enema. But if the operation that, the, that has to be done need, needs uh, to, to be cleansed, the surgeon will be able to tell you which type of enema to give to this patient so that you cleanse that area so that uh, an operation is done and the patient is not predisposed with it infection so if you have enough enough time make sure the patient has a, enough roughage in their in, in their diet so that they can pass stool without any difficulty so make sure the patient's bowels are, are, are empty before they can go to theater The, the urinary bladder also need to be emptied. As I said in the previous lesson, allow the patient to empty the bladder. They go to the toilet and void before they can go for operation. But if they are not able, make sure you pass on, you pass a, 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 a urinary catheter and make sure the patient is able to you are able to drain out all the urine and uh, in case it is an indwelling catheter leave it there so that the urine can be drained continuously we we desire in most cases to have the indwelling catheter on a patient going to theater because we don't want to puncture the urinary bladder as an operation is being done especially if it is an operation affecting the abdominal area so this is very important and make sure you take heed on how you are going to maintain an empty bladder and an empty bowel for this patient the next point is nutrition 
just like we talked about in the first uh, in part of the lesson where we need to give the high protein the high carbohydrate and vitamins to the patient so that we improve the nutritional status it is important these these ingredients these nutritional values are present so that we boost the patient's nutritional levels make sure also the patient is well hydrated if your patient is failing to take fluids orally and intravenous infusion is started or if the patient is having a low hb and is having problems with the blood make sure you prepare the patient's whole blood so that the patient can be transfused and this is going to help in the blood volume also to correct the electrolyte imbalances that the patient may be having so as you prepare this patient for their nutritional up 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 up, up for increasing their nutritional values make sure you serve the meals in small quantities attractive manner and frequently so that the patient can eat as much as possible so that they can get ready for the operation let's move on the next point is exercises make sure as i said in the in part one the deep breathing exercises are done five to ten times every hour so that it helps the patient to come and overcome the respiratory the post-operative post complications like pneumonia or atelectasis the exercises for the extremities or for the limbs are very helpful you therefore need to do them just like we did the the coughing exercises the patient should also be encouraged to be turning in bed and you should be talked to about early ambulation meaning the patient should be talked about to should be talked to about uh, coming out of bed early walking around the bed uh, moving out of bed sitting in a chair it this is important because they will, they, they will need to stimulate the respiratory functions and they will prevent the, uh, the stasis of blood, venous blood that may lead to emboli or, or thrombus formation. So make sure all these things are done for the patient before they can come and do them post-operatively. The next thing that we'll talk about is uh, medication. You need to give the prescribed drugs to the patient as they have been ordered before they can go to theater. And in most cases, these are done one hour, or 45 to one hour before surgery. This can be sedatives, for example, Valium, or the anticholinergic drugs like atropine which is given to the patient which is about 3 0.3 to 0.6 milligrams that is given so that it helps to dry up the the mucus secretions on the throat or in the respiratory system then sometimes antibiotics are given prophylactically meaning they, you give antibiotics so that you can prevent occurrence of infection postoperatively so all these medications you need to give them as planned and as the surgeon is waiting or as the anesthetist is waiting they will be able to plan which pre-medication can be given to this patient we move on This is the last word that we use in the word apophrenema. 
the last word A stands for advice or information, education, and communication. So you need to give your IEC to your patient on what to expect while in theater and or after the operation. Explain to them what is going on. Explain about the drainage tubes that they may have as they come back. Explain, give information on what is happening around the patient. This will help build the confidence of the patient and it will also help the patient to cooperate. So immediate pre-operative care, the care that you give immediately six to 12 hours before the patient can go for an operation. In a similar way, like we did in part one, you just need to continue to give your psychological care. You need to ensure that the, the results for all the investigations that have been done are collected and they are put in the patient's file. You need to ensure that the consent form has been signed in case it was missed and somebody forgot to sign, you need to check and make sure they sign, the, the consent is signed and you sign as a witness. Make sure the vital signs are done and as you go closer to the operate, uh, operation time, these will be the baseline data. So you also need to weigh your patient in case they will need to, to use the, the weight of the patient to calculate the drugs in theater, you need to give them the weight before the patient is anesthetized. You need to shave the patient. Oh, if you shave the patient, make sure the, you check the, the area where the operation is supposed to be done, if it is shaved and if it is clean. We move on. You need to starve the patient six to eight hours before surgery. So the last meal for the patient should be a light meal. That is the night before the operation so that the patient can easily empty the bowels and will have an empty colon as they go to theater. So starve your patient from midnight to the morning of the operation. Put a, a, a label on a patient's bed, new orally, so that the patient, everyone knows that in the world, this patient is not eating anything orally. You also need to make sure that you insert the, the nasogastric tube so that you completely empty, empty the, the, the GIT so that the patient is not uh, uh, able to, to vomit and uh, in, inhale their own vomitus. So make sure the, the NG tube is put and make sure that uh, the urinary uh, uh, bladder is uh, emptied or a catheter is put in place so that uh, the patient's uh, bladder is not injured. Make sure you also start an IV line on this patient. So this should be done within the period. If you are doing night duty, you are on the ward and the patient is going to theater at eight hours, and you are knocking off at 7.30, make sure all these things are done and you check, physically check if they are there on the patient before you can hand over to the next team that, may, that are going to take this patient to theater. We move on. Depending on the surgery that is going to be done, the enema, it should be given so that you clear the intestinal contents. So, as I said, if the doctor has 
ordered which kind of enema to be given. Sometimes the the antibiotics that uh, wash out the bacteria in the colon are used. Drugs like canamycin or neomycin. These are drugs that are given so that the colon is washed out and is cleaned before surgery. So you also ensure the patient is bathed as they prepare as on the morning of the operation. Make sure the patient is in a theater gown. Make sure the patient's hair is covered. Make sure all jewelries are removed. Make sure if the patient has dentures, remove the dentures and put them in a glass of water. Make sure you also label your patient so that the patient can be identified. Either you put up a bracelet, and if you don't have that facility, you can put all the labels, all the, the information on a, on a plaster and you put it on the forehead of the patient. You, you assemble all your case notes and all the investigation results and escort the patient to go to theater while you continue to observe the patient, while you are continuing to give psychological care. As I said, you are supposed to, to, to be on, this, on the head side of the patient, while the other person who is helping you to wheel the patient to theater, who is called a porter, is supposed to be on the legs of the patient and should be in front of you while you are following behind. So as you go into theater, you will find the theater nurse give a proper comprehensive handover to the nurse. Explain to the patient how you did how you, you they'll be cared for while in theater and how you come back to collect the patient. And as you come back to the ward, make sure you prepare a post op operative bed and put all the accessories that are needed so thank you very much we've come to the end of uh, part two of the general pre-operative care of a patient going uh, who's going to undergo surgery so thank you so much we'll meet in the next uh, lesson where we will look at uh, the emergency pre-operative care Enjoy your day. Thank you and bye.